Hey everybody, I hope you guys are all healthy and safe. So the three most high profile recent releases in the smartphone space right now are the iPhone 12 Pro, the Google Pixel 5, and the Huawei Mate 40 Pro. Since I'm fortunate enough to have all three of these devices on me, I figured I might as well do a camera showdown. So I've been carrying all three of these phones outside for the past two days, testing it during the day and testing it at night. And I took a bunch of photos, which I've already separated into 10 different categories on my computer. And then we're gonna examine them in real time just to see which camera wins in what. Okay, before we begin, let's take a look at the hardware. So interestingly, if you go look at hardware, the Google Pixel 5 is gonna lose by far. That's because the Google Pixel 5 has a main 12 megapixel sensor. It's the exact same sensor used in the Google Pixel 2. So that's four years now of Google using the exact same camera hardware. Google added a new ultra wide angle camera this year. It's a 16 megapixel shooter, it's actually quite good. And a selfie camera in this hole punch, it's an eight megapixel lens. Whereas Huawei, with every generation, they make a new camera breakthrough. With the P30 Pro, they introduced the RYYB sensor, which basically takes the RGB sensors used in digital cameras and swap the green for two yellow sensors, which helps it take in more light. And Huawei is also among the first company along with Oppo to develop a periscope zoom lens, which means the lens is placed sideways in the phone and it's L-shaped that gives image information more room to travel. And of course, Huawei was the first brand to push for a larger image sensor because the larger the image sensor, the more light it can take in and to also have a higher megapixel count and then use pixel binning to kind of combine more pixels worth of information into one. So Huawei has been pushing hardware with every generation of smartphone, whereas Google is like chilling in the back saying, no, hardware doesn't matter. Our software computational photography is what makes a smartphone good. Now, interestingly, Apple is kind of taking the middle ground, happy medium approach. With this year's new iPhone 12 Pro, you have a trio of 12 megapixel sensors here. Apple actually increased the image sensor of the main camera and also gave it a faster f-stop so it can take in more light. So that's a trick taken from Huawei's playbook. But at the same time, Apple's also doubling down on computational photography. If you watch the iPhone 12 launch event or the iPhone 11, Apple spent 10 minutes talking about all the HDR tech that they're doing, all the image stacking, computational photography, and the A14 Bionic chip in here, which may be the most powerful SOC in all three of these phones, does a lot of heavy work in terms of real-time processing for photos and videos. So this test is gonna be interesting because we're talking about bleeding edge camera hardware versus a four or five year old camera hardware, but we'll see who wins out. Let's go ahead and look at the photos. So you see I've split the photos and videos into 10 different categories. So we'll start with the first one, contrasty. I'm pretty sure that's not a word, but I just mean it's a scene with a lot of contrast, a lot of light, but also a lot of shadows. So we'll check dynamic range here. So we have daytime, nighttime. Let's start with the daytime. We have iPhone 12 Pro, Huawei Mate 40 Pro, Google Pixel 5. Now this set is surprising because the iPhone 12 Pro loses quite badly here. Look at how dark the image is at the bottom half of the image. Like look at this tree right here. You can't really see much of anything. It's just completely drenched in shadow. Whereas the Huawei Mate 40 Pro, it's actually really well lit. You can see different colors of the leaves. And down here, the words are much better lit too. The Google Pixel 5, you know, a little bit darker than the Mate 40 Pros, but still better than what the iPhone turned out. And you see the Pixel 5 also, you can see the words pretty clearly here, but ultimately, but then if you look at up here, the iPhone is the only one that did not completely blow out the sun. So you see right here, but I guess that's what you get when you have a darker image overall, then the highlights are not as blown out. Now second set, we'll look at contrast photos, but at night. Now this is a relatively tough shot because it's a really dark street, but then this store is very bright. So you have half the picture that's dark and half the picture that's pretty bright. So you see right off the bat, the iPhone 12 Pro kind of overexposes the lights a little bit here, whereas the Huawei Mate 40 Pro does a much better job of finding balance. Look at how sharp the plants are compared to the iPhone 12 Pro. Now let's look at the Pixel 5. 
The Pixel 5 does a pretty good job too. Let's go closer. Let's go to actual size. Okay, you see that the Pixel 5, when you go into actual size, loses a lot of details right here in the flowers right here. Whereas the flowers in the Mate and the iPhone image are still relatively detailed. The iPhone image is starting to look kind of fake though. It looks like a watercolor painting, whereas the Mate 40 Pro keeps the most details, I guess. But now let's check out the other half of the picture, the dark half. So you see the Pixel 5 shot is pretty dark but you know at the time the scene was really dark and you see the iPhone 12 Pro has a little bit of this lens flare right here which has been a problem with iPhones for the past couple of generations you look at the textures on the floor I think the Mate 40 Pro has the best texture you can actually see this writing here a little bit like somebody wrote the name before the pavement was dry whereas here on the Pixel 5 pretty hard to see on the iPhone you can see a little bit, but definitely not as sharp as the Huawei Mate 40 Pro. So I think for both day and night of this section, the contrasty section, the Huawei Mate 40 Pro produced the best shot. Now let's check out a general indoor shot, also 1x of the main camera. We have the iPhone 12 Pro right here. And then we have Mate 40 Pro, Pixel 5. So I guess that's going to be a recurring theme. The Pixel 5 is just always going to be slightly darker than the other two cameras because the Pixel 5 is the smallest image sensor by far. We'll check out the right portion of the picture first. So yeah, the Pixel 5 is the darkest. The iPhone... Okay, so you see once you go into actual size, the iPhone 12 Pro is probably the sharpest. There's a little, slight loss of details right here in the Huawei Mate 40 Pro's photos, whereas the Pixel 5 has a lot of noise. So both the iPhone and the Mate 40 Pro turn out pretty nice. I think this is kind of a two-way tie between Apple and Huawei. Now let's look at number three. This is low light. So this is yet another quite challenging shot. I took this in a really dark alley, but at the same time, there's a lot of light coming at the end of the alley. So it's really dark down here, but then it's really bright down the street. So this is quite... A contrasty shot too. Okay, once again, the Pixel 5 is the darkest of the three. The Huawei Mate 40 Pro is probably the most well lit, but it's a little bit too yellow. I think I like the iPhone 12 Pro's image the best right here, just looking at the three photos. Let's go into actual size. Wow, there's a lot of digital processing going on down here in the lighter area, especially on the iPhone 12 Pro. Like, look at this. This looks like a cartoon. Let's check out the fringes of the photo. Okay, once you go down to the side, well, you see there's a heck lot of noise and artifacts down here in the iPhone 12 Pro's photo. With the Pixel 5, you don't see it as much, but that's because it's completely dark. The Mate 40 Pro has a little bit of it, but it's... But you know what? Considering the fact that the Huawei Mate 40 Pro has the largest image sensor in all of smartphones, whereas the Pixel 4 is using a three-year-old camera lens, I think Google's computational photography is doing a good job of narrowing the gap. Now keep in mind, both the Pixel 5 and the iPhone 12 Pro are shooting in night mode here because it automatically turns on night mode. With the Huawei Mate 40 Pro, this is a standard photo. Now we'll go to section four, moderate low light. So now this is still low light, but it's a little bit better lit than earlier. So iPhone 12's image looks the sharpest. Let's go actual size. Okay, so the Mate 40 Pro's image is a little bit blurry. I wonder if I did something wrong for this shot, but I think the iPhone 12 turns out the most pleasing. All right, now let's check out this set. This is of the Siku Center. So it's iPhone 12 Pro right here. Huawei Mate 40 Pro. Google Pixel 5. Wow, the Pixel 5 did a really good job considering how small the sensor is. So Pixel 5 right here. This is the Huawei Mate 40 Pro. I think the Mate 40 Pro is a little bit too warm for my taste. I think the iPhone 12 Pro and the Pixel 5 had the best color signs. Let's look at the leaves down here in the lower left corner. So this is the iPhone 12 Pro right here. Everything is pretty sharp. You can see the texture of the ceiling quite well. But you notice there's a bit of loss of details right here. Now let's check out the Huawei image. Okay, so the Huawei image has a tighter, has a tighter crop, so I cannot get the leaves, but the texture here is a little bit better and so is the ceiling, but the light's a little bit yellow all around. Now it's the Pixel 5. It's a little bit dark on the outside, but this is a really nice 
shot. In fact, it probably looks a little bit cleaner compared to the iPhones. I might give the win to the Pixel 5 here. Okay, next up, we'll go selfies. So we have selfies during the day and during at night. So we have the iPhone 12 Pro, Huawei Mate 40 Pro, Google Pixel 5. So I don't have good skin and you can tell that the Pixel and the iPhone are basically keeping my skin exactly as this. So you can see I have a lot of acne scars and you can see all my scars. Whereas Huawei smooths it out a little bit. So honestly, if you ask me, I would prefer the Huawei selfie the best because it makes me look better. But to be honest, in reality, I look closest to either the iPhone or Pixel. So the iPhone and Pixel do a much better job of recreating the real photo. I mean, I mean, look at the iPhone selfie. You can actually see all the pores in my skin. That's, yeah. So the iPhone camera, if you're good looking, that's great. But if you're not that good looking, if you have bad skin like me, that's kind of a rough shot. All right, now let's look at nighttime selfies. We have the iPhone 12 Pro, Huawei Mate 40 Pro, and the Pixel 5. Okay, so right here, I actually like how the Pixel 5 lit up my face a little bit. You see a little bit of death in my face. With the Mate 40 Pro, I look a little bit soft right here around the eye. And also look at the plants. It's much sharper here than right here. But I think overall, I would prefer the iPhone 12 selfie. Look at my hair, it looks a little bit more natural then the Huawei which blurs a little bit and, or the pixel alright enough for my face so next to these are videos we'll do video at the end let's skip on to wide angle during the day so we have the iPhone 12 Pro Huawei Mate 40 Pro so keep in mind the Mate 40 Pro is going to have the most narrow field of vision so we have the pixel 5 here this is really aesthetically pleasing the leaves are green dynamic range is good now you see the Mate 40 Pro it's a brighter image but I think it's almost a little bit too bright I think the plants look a little bit better in the pixel than on the Mate 40 Pro let's look at the iPhone yeah same thing colors look a little bit dull on the iPhone too I think I prefer the pixels image the best let's go in the actual size let's look at this tree still really sharp even in actual size the Huawei Mate 40 Pro too and then we have the iPhone yeah, the iPhone's ultra wide is actually the worst of the three in terms of keeping details, detail sharpness. All right, now let's look at ultra wide angle at night. So we have the Pixel 5. You already see a lot of noise right here because the Pixel 5 has a relatively small image sensor. So this is already a lot of night mode trickery. Okay, so first things first, the iPhone has the best exposure. Look at the lights right here in the secret center. It, it's still properly exposed. You can see all the details of this light. With the Mate 40 Pro Cup, blows it out a little bit, and so does the Pixel. Let's check out the texture of the building. You go close a little bit, Pixel 5 loses a lot of details because the image sensor is just too small. Okay, now you go closer into the building. Yeah, the Mate 40 Pro keeps the most image integrity of the texture of the building compared to the other two. The iPhone looks particularly bad right here. Yeah, if you look at the trash can, the Mate 40 Pro's trash can just looks the cleanest. Whereas it looked very blurry right here. Now let's go to this building. As expected, the Mate 40 Pro has the best ultra wide angle camera in terms of details, but it overexposes a little bit. And now let's look at zoom shots. So this is going to be a clear win for Huawei because it has a periscope zoom lens whereas the Pixel 5 don't even have a zoom lens at all. So this is 5 times zoom with the iPhone 12 Pro. 5 times zoom with the Huawei Mate 40 Pro. And 5 times zoom with the Pixel 5. As you can see, it is almost night and day. Like, look at the difference between the iPhone 12 Pro 5X right here and the Huawei Mate 40 Pro 5X. And the Pixel 5 obviously is the worst of the three because it does not even have a telephone zoom lens. So let's just eliminate Pixel right away. Just between the iPhone and Mate, the iPhone loses quite badly too. And the thing is, that's not all for Huawei. This is 5X, but the Mate 40 Pro can go even further. You have 10X right here. 5X, 10X. So 10X is still pretty sharp. And then you have even 50X. Although 50X, you see, there's quite a bit of loss of details right here now. But I would say if you keep zoom under 25, you're getting a really clean shot with the Huawei Mate 
40 Pro. And right, now let's check out videos, daytime videos. I can truffle walking. Let's check out State by Station Maker. By comparison, the Huawei colors look a little bit dull, right? And you see, there's a little bit of jerkiness. The video shakes a little bit when I walk, so State by Station definitely. The Huawei Mate 40 Pro loses to the iPhone 2. So Pixel 5 has better stabilization than Huawei. There's not as much shakiness when you walk, the micro shakiness. But colors obviously can't match with the iPhone. That's during the day, now let's check nighttime video. So this is an iPhone 12 Pro video. Look at how bright everything is, and look at how green this is and how purple this is. This is dynamic range that's been dialed up. And now let's look at the Huawei Mate 40 Pro. Look at how, see, it looks a little bit more dull compared to what you saw on the iPhone 12, right? And yeah, a lot of micro jitteredness when you walk. Look at the camera shaking a little bit every step I take. So Pixel 5 is actually better lit than the Huawei Mate 40 Pro, but at the same time, it's, you can tell it's not sharp. This is very blotchy. Oh, and stabilization is not good at all. Okay, after we've examined all the photos, I think we can agree that the Google Pixel 5 held up pretty well, despite the fact that the camera hardware here is really outdated and underpowered. So I think that really proves Google's point that for smartphone photography, maybe software is the most important. Maybe it's like 80%, 70% of the work. But at the same time, you cannot deny that the Huawei Mate 40 Pro is just capable of taking shots that neither the iPhone nor the Google Pixel 5 can do simply because it has a periscope zoom lens, which is a better technology then the telephone lens on the iPhone and no telephone lens here. And also the RYYB sensor and a larger image sensor really makes a difference in low light performance. But I guess what I'm trying to say is it's really hard to declare a clear winner. It really depends on what you like. If you shoot a lot of videos, it's gonna be the iPhone. If you take a lot of ultra low light photos, you wanna do trick photography like 25X zoom, it's the Huawei. Or if you want something that's just kinda of like a dumb camera, you just point and shoot and the software will do all the work than maybe the Google Pixel 5. Anyway, that's about it for this camera comparison. I'm gonna have a lot more content coming up, including a full review of the Mate 40 Pro and a full review of the Google Pixel 5. And I'm gonna do a lot more testing. I have more phones here on me. I haven't even touched yet. So I have a lot more content coming up. If you're interested in stuff like this, please subscribe to my channel or follow me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Reviews. Thanks for watching.